Hi, my name is Will Brooks. I'm the CEO of Raconteur. And these are my biggest lessons. You work for the people you manage, they don't work for you. So I think a lot of new managers and leaders um, struggle with this. It's certainly something I wish I'd learned sooner. Uh, they get promoted typically from individual contributor roles into management or leadership positions. And they think, I've made it, or I'm the boss now, and this is my team. The problem with that way of thinking is that this is essentially still individual contributor thinking. Uh, and great leaders should be focused primarily on how to get the best out of other people. Where do they need more help? Where do they need more support? Um, how can they uh, contribute towards the company goals more? How can they achieve their personal goals more? And it really is your job as a leader to help them with this and work for them to help them figure that out. And I think you can typically tell a lot um, about what type of leader someone is by just listening to their go-to language. Is there a lot, a lot of me, my, and I? Or is there a lot of us, we, and our? The former typically indicates someone who is still inwardly focused. The latter indicates someone who is outwardly focused. Uh, and I believe that any great leader needs to be outwardly focused. Ego has no place in decision-making. I think a lot of leaders struggle to listen to other people's ideas um, or fully get behind them, even if they are prepared to listen. Uh, and usually this is driven by ego in, in one way, shape or form. Either they think people other than themselves couldn't possibly have great ideas, uh, or they think, you know, if we move forward with this idea, uh, I can't take the credit for it if it wasn't mine. Uh, and in my view, this just doesn't make any sense. If we all agree that one of your key jobs as a leader is to make the best decisions on behalf of the business and its employees. And if your employees are always feeding great ideas upwards to the leadership team and, and yourself, then you've simply got a bigger array of uh, options from which to pick the right route forwards. So for me, things like seniority uh, and uh, tenure have, have nothing to do with whether something's a, a good idea or not. And if you foster a culture of innovation and idea sharing, everyone will win. Employees will feel listened to. The business will win because you'll make better decisions. And as a leader, you will benefit too. It's okay for leaders to share their personality and their personal life at work. I know this one is hotly debated, and this is very much based on my own personal experience. But I think if leaders um, are confident to be open and honest uh, about their personality and their personal life, potentially also their vulnerabilities with their workforce, then that will make them far more approachable. Uh, that will make them far more authentic and it's likely to breed trust within the organization. Furthermore, it will encourage or make employees feel that it's okay to also share what's going on within, in their lives, either in or outside of the workplace. Uh, in my case at Raconteur, I've shared with people that historically I've, I've suffered with anxiety issues. Uh, I also suffer from colitis, which isn't the most fun uh, condition to live with at times. And I've done that because I want people to understand that sometimes that will impact my mood or my ability to, to do certain things at work. Um, and I think as a result of that, numerous people have felt comfortable coming and telling me or other members of the leadership team or, or perhaps even their colleagues what's going on in their, in their world. Now, sometimes um, it's things we can help with. It might be changing someone's working hours a little bit to, to help them out in, with something. Uh, other times you can't really help, but I think even offering that pair of ears uh, can be a weight off someone's shoulders. And for me, opening up as a leader potentially then gives you such a great level of insight for what your employees are going through. Uh, and that will really help you support them help them or just get the best out of them given their circumstances. Ride out the career lows in order to experience the career highs. I think it's fairly well accepted now that, that the modern generation are more willing to, to job hop than previous generations were. Um, but my argument would always be uh, to really think about that decision um, because I believe if you are working at an organization where there are a few frustrations, um, maybe with your role or maybe with the company itself, but you actually work through that and you help the company work through its challenges. And that company is far more likely to reward and to progress you 
subsequently, uh, and that those rewards might just be a little bit bigger than the rewards you would get by continually moving company. I know this isn't easy, and I'm not saying it's a blanket rule. Of course, if there's a toxic culture or a, a leadership team that will never listen to you, then get out of there. Um, but again, my experience at Raconteur, we've had some tricky times over the years, but I've always believed in the cause. I've always loved the culture uh, and I've stuck with the business. And I think I'd like to think I've helped the business uh, get back to a really high level of success. And I've also benefited from that, from that myself, uh, as have a number of other senior people at Raconteur. I have people who add, not just people who fit. So when I was less experienced, I used to obsess about hiring people who were cultural fits. After interviews, we used to discuss whether someone was a raconteur, which in our world meant, are they the same as us? And guess what? Our culture never evolved and our business didn't grow that fast. Nowadays, we're far more interested in what someone will bring to the organization that we don't already have. That could be new work or life experiences. That could be new ideas. That could be new skills. The point is we're deliberately looking for people who will bring something that we don't already have. And I think the key point here is that if you build a genuinely inclusive culture where anyone is welcome and anyone can thrive, you don't even need to worry about whether someone will fit in because they will. Uh, and that enables you to truly hire the best person for every job. Uh, and from our experience, our business has really started to thrive and grow much faster since we took this approach. Thank you.